Welcome to this after lunch session on heuristic search. Uh, our first talk will be by Patrick Haslam on incremental lower bounds committing for additive cost planning problems of God's sake, it's long time. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to put it there and it will pick up. Uh, can you just switch the thing off? Again, the same, the solid line is the lower bound. The stars, which you can barely see, go roughly up to here. What's interesting about this uh, domain is that this is uh, the encoding of the genome edit distance problem. And because this is a fairly well-studied problem, there exist domain-specific solutions for it, which can give us not optimal solutions, but <laughs> at least fairly good ones, and also lower bounds. So the gray bars there in the middle are the gap that is left between the best solution and the highest lower bound that we can find with domain-specific methods in this particular domain. So that's showing that, at least in this case, the, the fault or the blame for the gap belongs to both sides. So in order to close it, we both need better solutions and we need better lower bounds. So, to sum it up,
You going to say my name or should I just... Uh... I know who I am. Uh, I think so. Okay, uh, thank you for the kind introduction, Kamala. Um, okay, so this is in many ways a follow up of our HKI work last year. Um, well, I was trying to mention last year when I gave the talk, I had one of the worst hangovers of my life, so luckily that's not the case today. Uh, I don't know if anybody was anybody there last year in Barcelona? I think you said you'd come, but you didn't, I don't know. Okay, anyway. Huh? Uh, yeah, okay, at the talk. Okay, nobody is in my talk. That's a good thing. I haven't yet dared to look at the recording. So, we'll start with the background. Hardly surprising. Okay, uh, maybe I continue the gag from last talk. So, does anybody not know what merchant shrink abstractions are? Does anybody know what merchant shrink abstractions are? Uh, okay. There's only a small gap um, that you need to close. Um, okay, so, I mean, essentially, like, uh, as it's written here, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to construct an abstraction of the state space, which means a smaller state space in which some states have been aggregated into a single state. It's equivalent to saying we impose an equivalence relation over the states, and then we compute the heuristic in the quotient system. Okay, so the way we're doing this is we... Uh, Iteratively take uh, the single state variables and merge them, which basically means we build a synchronized product. And then, so if we do that without doing anything else, we're gonna get the actual state space. So what we do is in between those merging steps, we're gonna do a shrinking step, that's why it's called merge and shrink. And the shrinking step just means to aggregate some states and thereby we can keep the abstraction small. And, well, this is the intuition compared to pattern databases in case you're familiar with them, but let's just go to a little more concrete representation of the idea. So here's the basic algorithm we're executing. We start with the set of atomic abstractions, or, well, which will be atomic projections, projections onto a single state variable. So projecting onto a single state variable means uh, we just ignore all the other variables and then we build a state space that corresponds to a single variable, basically. Uh, I have an example on the next slide. So then we just make a loop. We pick two of those abstractions in some fashion and then we will merge them and we replace the previous two abstractions with their merger, with their, with their product, and then we're gonna shrink the product until only a single abstraction remains, and then that'll be the abstraction returned, and as I already mentioned, if we do not actually shrink, then we're reconstructing the actual state space, which is not what we want to do. Uh, what we want to do is we want to have something that uh, runs quickly and will give us an informative estimate for search. Okay, there's two questions we need to answer. The first is how do we actually pick those two abstractions? I mean, which two abstractions do we pick at any given point in time? And I'm not gonna answer it in this talk. Uh, the one that I'm gonna talk about, and really we haven't thought much about how to answer this question. The one we've been going on about for years is the second one, how to shrink an abstraction. So which are the two, how do I actually aggregate the states? At the end of the day, it boils down to, to the following question. You have an abstraction, some state space, and you need to pick two states that you choose to aggregate. And you wanna do this in a way that loses as little information as possible. So the question is, how do you choose those two states? So here's a worked example. So uh, we all like trucks and packages, right? So here we got one package and two trucks. Um, the state should be kind of obvious. So the first letter is where the package is, and then we have the truck. So LRR means package left, the two trucks on the right. And we are not gonna go into a lot of detail on this. This is basically the state space, okay? So, in Merchant Shrink, what we're looking at first is the atomic projections, which are these here. So on the left, you see the projection onto the package. The package can be on the left, on the right, or in track A or in track B, and then those are connected according to the operators of the problem. Uh, you don't have to worry about these PAL and DEL uh, things here. I mean, they're, they're basically abbreviations of the names of the operators. They're important in some contexts, but not really for this one here. Uh, they're just in there because they happen to be already done by Malton. We were too lazy to remove them. Okay. Then you see two atomic abstractions for track A and track B with the obvious structure, right? So what we now have is this collection of abstractions down there on the bottom left. Okay, that's what we start with. Then we pick two abstractions, in this case, uh, the one for the package and for track A, and you build a product, which will give us the transition system you see here. So uh, our collection of abstractions is now reduced to just two members, right? We have this abstraction that we call T1, and we still have the other atomic ab abstraction left for track B. Now what they're gonna do is they're gonna shrink that abstraction in order to obtain some new abstraction T2. 
And now we're in the situation I outlined, we have to decide which states am I going to aggregate here. So let's just pick two of them, those two for example. We aggregate them into a single state, which means that, well, we, we mer merge them into a single node and uh, with all the incident edges. So obvious transformation. We choose some more. Oh, it wasn't actually this. Uh, how do I get back on this? Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so I select two more states and um, aggregate them, two more states, aggregate them, two more states, these two here, and aggregate them, and finally end up with this abstraction here. Okay, so we just keep doing this until we think it's small enough. Um, much, of, much of the time we will impose a fixed bound, but not necessarily. Okay, and then uh, we have this new collection here. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build the product of those two abstractions and then eventually we finish, but I'm not going to show this here. So, how do we actually answer the question how to aggregate two states, how to choose the, the states to aggregate? Here's the answer we gave last year and it's really based on a very well-known and um, age-old notion uh, called bisimulation. So an equivalence relation is a bisimulation that looks uh, like uh, the, the little picture here in the top right corner from your perspective. So the two, two states S and T are bisimilar, which you can take to mean equivalent. If for every operator, for every transition label L that you see here, that label leads you into two states that are again equivalent. So whatever you do in those two states, you get two two states that are indistinguishable or equivalent. Okay, so what uh, the obvious idea is, okay, we're going to aggregate two states S and T if and only if they're bisimilar in that sense. So if we do that, then we obtain a perfect abstraction, which means a perfect heuristic. So if during merge and shrink, the only shrinking steps we ever do are these, then we will get a perfect heuristic. We will compute the actual cost of the planning task. Um, it's pretty easy to see that on any single transition system, if you do a bisimulation reduction, you're not going to change the cost function. That's simply because, well, you're not doing anything wrong, right? Any states you aggregate are actually equivalent. Uh, the question that you then have to answer, and that is a crucial mm, observation for this talk, is, well, we're not picking a transition system and shrinking it. We're actually doing a whole merge and shrink process and you're shrinking during that process. So what you have to show is that this property is invariant throughout the merge and shrinking process. It's very easy to see for the shrinking steps, it's really trivial. Uh, the, the question is, is it invariant of emerging steps? So, and I really need a third tent here to hold the mic because I was planning to illustrate it with my hands. You have two abstractions, okay? <laughs> one left, one right, you build a bisomation of this one, bisomation of this one, now you make a product. And it turns out that this product abstraction is again a bisimulation of the product system. Okay, that's what I call invariant. Okay, uh, here's just a simple example of a bisimulation. So, of our logistics example first. So, the equivalence relation you see here is a bisimulation, and you can notice that it's indeed a perfect abstraction. So, any state here, so those will be aggregated, and that doesn't change the distance of any of those states from the green goal area. But um, okay. The problem with bisimulation is that uh, it gives you a perfect heuristic, but most of the time it's exponential, it takes exponential time to compute. I mean, the, the abstractions are just too big. So it's not really what you wanted. What you wanted was something that is more approximative and that takes less runtime. And uh, we also gave an answer to that in our paper last year, which was called greedy bisimulation. So the idea here is to make a bisimulation, but not relative to all operators of the problem or all transitions in the problem, but only relative to a subset of the transitions which basically means is, okay, we're gonna relax this uh, notion by forgetting about part of the transitions in the state space. The ones we forget about, according to our old definition here, so I'm gonna get to a new one uh, shortly, is that we ignore the transitions that increase um, the goal distance, so that increase the cost function. So we're gonna look at only at those transitions, um, go and transition in which it does not increase the cost function. Okay. So the good news is this is still locally perfect. Locally perfect means if you apply this to any one transition system, you get a perfect heuristic. It's not that difficult to see. So we don't lose information locally. Problem is, it's no longer invariant. So if you do this during merge and shrink, we do not get a perfect heuristic. Why is it no longer invariant? Well, um, again, I would like to use my hands, so whatever. Okay. So the track is on the left hand side, packed to here. The truck is at its own goal already on the right. It doesn't want to move to the left. Right? So that's why we ignore that transition. So uh, when you do the bisimulation, we ignore the fact that the truck might want to go to the left because it doesn't want to go there. 
However, here's the package, and when I multiply them, all of a sudden going to the left actually makes sense because we need to do it to catch the package. Okay? And that's why in the product system we no longer have a 3D device simulation because that one operation, which is actually a good one, has been ignored. Um, I hope that gives you a little bit of the idea. So anyway, it's no longer invariant. Uh, it's still worst case exponential, although in practice that it's not as much of a problem. Uh, what we really didn't like about this is that the global effect when you apply it inside merge and shrink is completely unpredictable. You, you just have absolutely no grip on what's going to happen in the later iterations of the merge and shrink process. And that's what we're going to remove now. So catching relevant labels is basically the technique we contribute here and the idea is so simple uh, it's almost uh, embarrassing. So basically what you do is you select a subset of the operators of the global operators of the problem. You just say, okay, I'm going to care only about loading actions, for example. And then you just do a bisimulation relative to this operator subset. So this means you do a, an exact abstraction relative to a subset of the transitions, namely those that are induced by a subset of the operators. Okay. And that turns out to be invariant, and that is really a completely um, easy result. I mean, this is trivially invariant. Uh, you might not see it uh, in this very second, but it's very easy to verify. So, what that means is that if we shrink by a K catching by simulation, where K is a set of labels, and we always do that during merge and shrink, then in the end you'll have a K catching by simulation of the state space. So, in order to make it meaningful, we now just all we now